Hey you guys, what's up? It's me. I am back again for another vlog video, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I have story time for you. It is almost Easter in a couple of weeks, so naturally I am formulating in my mind what Easter desserts I'm going to show you here on Gretchen's Bakery. And with that, uh, you know, the holiday, t no matter what holiday it is, um, it always brings me back to my bakery days and it makes me think of just different things that happened while I was in the bakery and different stories. And so I figured I would um, share some of those stories with you guys. And so Easter was one of the big holidays, obviously, in the bakery. Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day. Um, those are probably the four biggest holidays of the year. Now, my bakery, a lot of you came to visit me when I owned it and when I was in there, so you can... Oh, it's so loud. I don't know if you guys hear that siren. Sorry about that if you do. Um, but uh, some of you would come to visit me when I owned my bakery, and so you can kind of remember that my store was quite small. Um, the kitchen part of it was actually bigger than the storefront, and um, but it, all of it was always perfectly the right amount of size for a normal day. Um, which, let's say, for example, on any normal day of the year, um, non-holiday, you know, I'd have maybe between 10 to 30 orders a day, whether it was cakes or cookie platters or just like whatever. Um, so the amount, uh, and that's just orders, so not to mention what we would produce for the store. Um, daily, every day, everything was made fresh. So, um, you know, fill the case with all of those things. So everything, the space that I had was perfect amount for any regular day. But when holiday time came around, my little bakery was so completely maxed out because I would go from the regular amount of volume that we would do on a normal day to literally 10 times that amount on any of those major holidays. So imagine having just enough space for all of your stuff, maybe a little bit extra on a regular day, and then all of a sudden holiday time comes around and you just need tons more space. So literally we would have things everywhere I mean the employees my employees wouldn't even have a place to put their coat or their purse when they came to work that's how much space on a holiday we would take up with cake orders cookie orders just even ingredients the amount of flour and sugar that I'd have to buy during those holiday times was just like um, unbelievable and so the refrigeration space maxed out like the oven was running 24 hours a day just to produce all of these orders so not only that but what would ha end up having to happen is you've got to organize all of that stuff right because when you open the doors at 6 or 7 a.m. on a holiday and people are flooding in to pick up their orders um, you need like an organized way to be able to locate the orders quickly and like on a normal day 10, 20 cakes, big deal, right? Everybody has a little tag and Mrs. Smith would come in and pick up her cake and say, hi, I'm Mrs. Smith and I'm here for my cake. And we'd say, okay, no problem. Go look in the refrigerator and all the cakes had their own little space and you could see the orders, the tags sticking up with Mrs. Smith. Okay, no problem. Two seconds and you've got her cake. So imagine that's 20 cakes on a regular day. Imagine on a holiday, now you've got 200 cakes that you have to try to locate with their name tag and you could spend a half an hour rifling through 200 orders just trying to find Mrs. Smith's cake, right? So, a different system had to be devised for holiday time just to make the process go quicker, smoother, and um, it was basically called the number system. So, it, it really, the previous owner who I bought it from, he's the one who came up with this order system and he obviously taught, taught it to me and it was a bit chaotic when I learned it and I was always like, you know, there has to be a better way. But in the 10 years that I owned my bakery, I never figured out a better way because this system really was foolproof. So basically what would happen is you would come in, place your order for Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever, and uh, we would take the order down just as we normally would, but rather than, well, we would take their last name and phone number, of course, but we'd take it one step further and give them a number, and we would say, 
here's your little ticket number don't lose it when you come in to pick up your order please bring it with you you have to remember your order number everybody oh yeah sure no problem well you know oftentimes when it came down to the day of picking up the orders people would come in the store and we'd say okay what's your they'd say I'm here to pick up my order okay what's your number oh I didn't get a number <sighs> Yes, you did, because everybody got an order number. Okay, what's your last name? So let me backtrack a little bit, because for the week leading up to the holiday, I would stay every single day after hours until all hours of the night just organizing the number system with the last names and what they ordered to flow that through to a production list so that the kitchen knows what to make, for who, how much of it, so that then the girls packing the order or putting the platters together would then still have the order number so it was like this whole chaotic system but it really really worked so I would then have a master sheet with the person's name the person's phone number and of course their order number in a notebook so that we knew when they would come in to pick up their numbers a lot of people would say they never got a number and we would say yes you did what's your last name so then we'd go to the master sheet look up mrs. Smith right and then um, find her order number that way but sometimes we couldn't even find their last name and it was just like how is that even possible so then we would say because this is the second fail proof what is your phone number so then we would look down the list to locate their phone number and sometimes and so and so like it would be okay mrs. Smith right and my phone number is 1-800-555 whatever and so we'd then go, okay, well, but it, if this is your phone number, the last name isn't Smith. And then they'd go, oh, I must have put it under uh, Jones. And I'd go, like, how do you have two last names? Like, I'm, tell I'm not making this stuff up. Like, imagine the chaos of trying to get out 200 orders on one day, first of all. And then you've got people coming in going, I didn't get a number. Yes, you did. What's your last name? Smith. No, it's not. It's Jones. Like, it, it was like just this, I mean, you almost had to laugh because it's just like bizarre. So anyway, let me get to the even better part of this story. So this is the system, and imagine like 20, 30 people deep in the store, not only picking up orders, but buying things from the case and wanting cookie platters made up on the fly. So it's just like chaos on a holiday. It's like absolutely insane. And so a woman came in. I can't remember which holiday it was, but she came in. It was the whole system of, hi, I'm here to pick up my order. The last name is Cucka Hall. And I'll never forget that last name because, first of all, it's a crazy last name. But last name Cucka Hall. Okay, Mrs. Cucka Hall. Well, what's your number? Because we do an order system, a numbering order system for the holiday. And when you placed your order, you got a number. No, I didn't. I didn't get a number. Okay, so we'd go to the master sheet and we'd look up and try to find Cucka Hall. And, you know, I mean, it might take a few minutes to look through 200 orders uh, written down in a notebook to locate Kaka Hall, right? So meantime, she's in the store getting antsy, huffing and puffing. The place is chaos, and you can hear her in the back, and she's over the customers going, the last name's Kaka Hall. The last name's Kaka Hall. Who else has the last name Kaka Hall? And it was just like at that moment, like everyone is looking at this woman in the midst of this chaos. The Easter Bunny is running rampant all over my store. Like it's just absolute chaos and she's yelling cucka hall all throughout the store and I mean it's funny to me now <laughs> but if you can imagine the stress and I don't know if I've painted a clear picture of the amount of stress and some of you work in bakeries and you own bakeries and you understand just like the amount of pressure that is on you on those major holidays to just get everything out get it out on time um, it's at that capacity with just like people in the store like you know of course they're stressed out because they have to get home to prepare their holiday feast and all they want to do is come in and pick up their order right so anyway it's just like funny things like that that I think about um, that obviously weren't funny in the bakery that day because the level of stress 
that um, comes with a day like that. So anyway, that was a funny story, and, and I think of that sometimes in my mind. I'm just like, Kaka Hall, Kaka Hall. The last name's Kaka Hall. Who has the last name Kaka Hall? So anyway, I, I'll never forget that, and to me it's just so funny now. But honestly, especially after Christmas, because Christmas to me started the day after Thanksgiving, and it was just felt like one really long day and so once you get it all out and you close the doors after working that much and you can sit down and just like the stress just sort of like it's like it just kind of steams out of you like you've turned a valve and all of a sudden it's just like decompress and um, sometimes I would just cry, like just like as a stress reliever, like, oh my God, I can't believe we just did that. And it's pretty amazing. And um, I, I did love it. I, I do love that sort of a challenge and um, just being able to pull that kind of stuff off without a hitch. And a lot of times we never made one single mistake. I mean, sometimes at the end of the day, um, you'd turn around and look at where all the orders were, like the shelves were just packed with orders like you couldn't even see anything that's how many orders were on these shelves and then at the end of the day when the last customer left you'd look and everything would be completely empty maybe with like one little bag of I don't know brownies or something left behind and we'd be like ah somebody didn't get their brownies and so but that didn't really happen that often I mean once in a while um, and then we would just call or they'd call and say hey I didn't get my brownies and <clears throat> It was never really a problem, but um, just the funny stories of what would happen in the chaos of being in the bakery. And so when people say, do you miss working in the bakery? Um, I think it's like, it's, it's like yes and no. Um, I, I don't really miss it because it was very stressful. You know, it's so, it's so funny because when I would see, when you hear the stories of working in the bakery, some people who just don't get it, they'd be like, it's a bakery. How could it be stressful? It's sprinkles and cupcakes. And I guess you don't really fully understand it until you're in it, but you know what? Any retail driven business during the holidays is very stressful. So that's my Easter story for you guys. And um, I'm definitely going to be thinking about more because um, it's just fun to share these stories. And I know you guys love hearing stories of the bakery. So, um, that's it. It's a quick vlog for today and leave your comments below if you're liking this vlog, if you have suggestions for um, what else you want to see me do or talk about. So um, I love your comments. I thank you guys for supporting me here. Um, give me a like. Don't forget that. Subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to get all of the recipes at Gretchen'sBakery.com and Gretchen'sVeganBakery.com. <clears throat> Ugh, I've been coughing so much lately. I don't know what is going on with me, but anyway, um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so I'll be formulating my Easter ideas, like, actually today and as we speak, and I'm going to get to prepping that, so look out for a new Easter video that's probably going to be ready by next week, and um, stay tuned for more vlogs. I hope you guys are loving this because I definitely love catching up with you in this way. It's a lot of fun for me, and um, that's about it. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.